वेलकम बैक गाइज आई एम हेयर विद यू टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम नंबर 24 फोर ऑफ सी एस आई नेट दिसंबर टू सो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ एनालिसिस ओके सो लेट अस फर्स्टली रीड दिस क्वेश्चन सो इट से इज लेट एफ सज दैट जीरो कॉमा इन्फिनिटी द ओपन इंटरवल बी यूनिफॉर्मली कॉन्टीन्यूस ओके सो एफ इज अ रियल वैल्यूड फंक्शन विच इज कॉन्टीन्यू विच इज यूनिफॉर्मली कॉन्टीन्यूस ओवर दिस डोमेन देन वट क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग that you need to check whether this limit will exist or whether this limit will exist okay you need to check the existence of both of these limit so in the question what you have to do you have to check whether this limit exist or not this is what you have to check and another thing that you have to check that limit x goes to infinity uh fx will exist or not right this is what you have to check now what is given to you it is given to you that f is uniformly continuous so being uniformly continuous i can apply the definition for uniformly continuous functions right so for that matter i will show you this definition of uniform continuity so firstly see what is this definition okay now firstly see given a metric space x comma d1 and y comma d2 so these are your metric spaces and f is a function from x to y then the definition says that it is called uniformly continuous if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that whenever this distance is less than delta you will get uh, you will get distance between fx and fy less than epsilon you are getting my point so what this definition actually says that f is uniformly continuous when for all epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 so that whenever this distance okay i am in the real uh, real scenario so i am using modulus i am using the usual metric right so i am using modulus here Th therefore i am writing this again so whenever distance between x and y is less than delta okay yeah uh, whenever is also there so that whenever x and x, x and y is less than delta distance between x and y is less than delta we have fx minus fy that means distance between fx and fy less than epsilon okay so this definition is in the usual sense this is the most generalized case for the uniform continuity but i am writing it in the real sense right when with the usual metric so this is this is the definition now come back to your question it says limit x goes to infinity i am going to check this one first okay i am going to check this limit will exist or not right so i'm going to take a counter example for it and what is that counter example fx is equal to sin x is that counter example now firstly see this is well defined over this domain okay so you can take this as your example now the only thing that is that is you need to uh, that is you need to prove is that this is uniformly continuous then you can take it as your example okay so what what is the definition for uniform continuity it says for every epsilon greater than 0 you must get a delta greater than 0 such that whenever x minus uh, distance between x and y is less than delta you have distance between fx and of y less than epsilon right so i will firstly evaluate okay let us consider a epsilon greater than 0 right now i am showing this that this function is uniformly continuous so i am going to prove it using usual definition there are theorems by which you can prove it easily but i am going to prove this by usual definition because that will make you familiar with this definition and you will feel more comfortable while solving questions of uniform continuity by this definition right so firstly see what is this difference sin x minus sin y so i am going to use a class 12th identity or class 11th identity sin x minus sin y you already know that this thing is equal to sin x minus y over 2 and uh, this one is cos of x plus y over 2 this you already know from your class 11th or 12th so this thing you know already now what do you know that max value of cos x is always 1 right maximum value of cos x is always 1 so you can always write this thing like this 2 sin x minus y over 2 right you can do this now i am going to use this identity that sin x is always less than equal to x okay this is always true so this identity i am going to use so i am replacing this with what i am replacing this with x that is what is our x our x is x minus y over 2 right 
So from here what you are getting that sin x minus sin, uh, sin y is actually less than x minus y okay modulus modulus is also there. So this is what you are getting now okay. So now come to your definition. So it says for every epsilon greater than 0 you must get uh, if function is uniformly continuous if for every epsilon greater than 0 you are getting a delta. So you need to find out delta what is your delta okay. So I will choose what I will choose my delta choose your delta to be delta is equal to epsilon. So whatever epsilon you are starting with just choose that delta to be your epsilon okay. So from here your x minus y whenever this quantity is less than delta whenever this quantity is less than delta then you what you are getting you are getting sin x minus sin y is less than epsilon you are getting it or not. So I have only used these two identity that cos x is always less than 1 and sin x is less than x and I am done right you are getting my point or not just think over it that why I am choosing delta to be epsilon okay this is very important step and, uh, and hence you have proved from this thing that your function is actually a uniformly continuous function. So I am erasing this okay I am done with this that why it is uniformly continuous. Now since it is uniformly continuous therefore I can use this as a counter example for me okay now check the limit limit x goes to infinity sin x what is the limit. So if you are checking this limit you will get sin infinity right and sin infinity has no fixed value this is actually a oscillation right oscillation between 1 and minus 1. So from here you are what you can say that limit does not exist this is what you can say now since limit does not exist therefore your first option is incorrect because it says limit exists. this one is also incorrect so first and third are discarded from this thing okay now what I will do I will prove that this limit actually exists. this is what I will prove okay okay now I am erasing this again I will not erase the definition but I will erase everything okay you need to show that this limit fx exists okay so what is the meaning of this existence of this limit the meaning I am going to use sequential definition for the existence of this limit so what is sequential definition I will firstly write this thing sequential okay sequentially sequential I will say sequential definition for existence of limit right. So definition is very simple you want, you want to check that whether this limit will exist or not. So if you take any sequence in 0 to infinity okay such that xn goes to 0 then you will say that this limit is this limit exists what you will say if this limit exists uh, then limit x goes to 0 if x exists if and only if fxn goes to some l okay where l is a some uh, where l is a some finite quantity right. So what I am saying that xn is in this your domain okay you need to check whether limit x goes to 0 plus of fx will exist or not. So you take any sequence this is the sequential definition you take any sequence which goes to 0 this limit exist means actually means that your fxn this limit limit n goes to infinity this must exist you are getting my point. So this is the sequential definition for the existence of limit okay this the definition I am going to use right. So I need to check whether this fxn the sequence will uh, the limit for this sequence will exist or not I am going to use this definition for the existence of limit okay both of these definitions are equivalent you need to check whether limit x goes to 0 plus of fx will exist or not what I am going to use I will take a sequence inside your domain such that xn goes to 0 now if xn goes to 0 then I need to check whether fxn will goes to some quantity okay it should go to some l where l is a finite quantity then I can say that this limit actually exists. So this should happen for every xn that goes to 0 then only I can say this thing okay. 
now this is your definition sequential definition so i will erase this now now see what i have what i am telling you that let firstly i will take a sequence inside your domain such that xn goes to 0 okay now since i'm 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 proving this thing now okay so this is the proof so since xn goes to 0 that means xn is actually convergent so from here what you can say that xn is cauchy right xn is cauchy now i need to show that what i need to show that fx and this sequence limit uh, should converge i need to show that this sequence should converge okay what i have used from this step to this step every cauchy, every convergent sequence is cauchy that you already know and you are in the real scenario with the usual metric so you can say cauchy if and only if convergence okay so i have used that thing here so i need to show that this sequence actually converges this is what i need to show now what i am going to use in the real scenario what you know that cauchy if and only if convergence so if i somehow show that this sequence fxn is cauchy then i am done because if it is cauchy then it must converge to somewhere you are getting my point or not so i am going to use i am going to prove that this sequence fxn is actually cauchy okay so let us consider any epsilon greater than 0 okay now i need to show that this sequence is cauchy okay so i have used i am using the definition of cauchy thing okay now fxn minus fxm okay okay so see firstly what is given to you that f is uniformly continuous so for any epsilon greater than 0 what you will have you will have a delta there is i am using now definition of uniform continuity this is what is a plus point for you for every epsilon greater than 0 there must exist a delta greater than 0 such that whenever this thing is less than epsilon uh, no no sorry whenever such that whenever xn minus xm is less than delta you will have fxn minus fxm less than epsilon right you are getting my point or not so there exists a delta greater than zero such that whenever this thing is less than delta you will have this thing less than epsilon this is the definition for uniform continuities now this will happen for any delta greater than zero this will happen because xn is cauchy so for all n comma m greater than n naught this will happen so from this step what you will get you will get that this will also happen for all n comma m greater than some n not belonging to natural number this n not is a, is a uh, random number okay fixed random number so for all n comma m greater than n not this will happen so from this is very obvious from here that fxn is cauchy right okay see actually it uh, it will take some little bit minute to okay uh, think over it that why it is cauchy okay I, I have just used the definition of uniform continuity in order to show that fxn is cauchy okay see the definition of cauchy again and then finally conclude that why i am saying that fx after this step it is trivial that fxn is cauchy okay from here fxn is cauchy therefore fxn converges now it converges so it means it converges to some l that means that limit x goes to 0 plus actually exist you are getting my point now so therefore your second option is correct but your fourth option is incorrect okay now the proof that i have used in order to show that limit x goes to 0 plus fx exist is actually more important why it is more important that if you will choose f a uniformly continuous function on a b I'm, I'm going to use I'm going to show you a result okay so if f is a function on a b and limit okay that is more general result I'm going to uh, I'm going to tell you so f is a function on a b right so what is the uh, what is then what is the result f is said to be uniformly continuous if limit x goes to a uh, plus fx exist and similarly this thing should happen for limit x goes to b minus fx this thing also 
this thing also uh, this thing also exist mm, exist okay so this is the result that i am talking about this is more important result than this so the same way i have proved that if this limit will exist and this limit will exist then i can say that your function is uniformly continuous okay the proof goes much much similar to this what i have proved here that's why i am introducing this new result to you that if f is a if f is a function on closed inter, uh, open interval ab and the both the limit exist this one and this one both exist where a and b are finite right then you can say that your function is uniformly continuous okay this is had not, this this thing has nothing to do with uh, your question but since i have proved that limit x goes to 0 plus will exist now you can do this thing for any a you are not getting it that if i will replace this 0 with a then also you can prove this with the same proof you can go through with a also now if you, i will do this for b then also you can go through with this proof you are getting my point or not so the same proof the same similar argument will go while proving these things okay so i am writing this thing for you you to just remember you okay to, to just uh, make a note inside your brain that if you want to prove that f is a continuous function over the open interval a b then you are already done you don't need to prove anything you just need to prove that whether this limit will exist or not okay so this is a very important note in your exam okay uh, while proving the uniform continuity thing okay so thank you guys